Welcome back to Duke's Copy TV. I'm Elaine Stenson. I'm joined in the studio now by Scott Weber, who's Director General with Interpeace here in Geneva. Scott, you're very welcome to the studio. Glad to be here. So can you give our viewers an overview about what kind of organization Interpeace is and what it is that you stand for? Sure. Interpeace is an international peacebuilding organization originally created inside the United Nations back in 1994 to help countries overcome conflict and to build lasting peace. We've learned the hard way in doing this work all around the world that for peace to be sustainable, it really has to be owned by that society. That when you impose solutions or import solutions from the outside, they rarely take root. And so the real challenge of building peace is to help society own that peace. They have to come up with the solutions to their own conflicts. That way they will protect that peace over the long run. That's what creates sustainable peace. Okay, and you have recently developed a partnership with Mirabeau. Yes. Um, can you tell me what the objective of this partnership is? Sure. We are very proud of this partnership with Mirabeau. Uh, we've been searching for some time for a, uh, a, an actor in the private sector, particularly in the banking sector, with whom we could work to see how we can harness the market to make the world a safer place. And it really clicked with Mirabeau, primarily because we share many of the same core values. And so what we've done together is we've created a fund of funds that invests in the world's emerging markets. And Mirabeau then shares part of the proceeds, uh, the performance and management fees with Interpeace. And we use those funds to help work in conflict societies to help stabilize them for the long run. And so this is a win-win-win. The investor, get, it's a great product, uh, investing in emerging markets today. Um, Mirabeau is, uh, is uh, able to work uh, on uh, this uh, fund with us and with these investors and Interpeace is better able to help stabilize these societies. So everyone wins in the end. Okay, and you mentioned investment in emerging markets there, but do you think that there's more of a risk for investors to invest in emerging markets? I think what's clear is that uh, most of the global growth is, has been in emerging markets and will remain in emerging markets for the foreseeable future. So risks, of, there are always risks and that with volatility comes profits as well. But I think uh, with the growth of the emerging markets that we're talking about, the Brazils, Chinas, et cetera, um, the, uh, the opportunities are huge still. So no, I don't think that's a, a greater risk. And is progress sustainable in these areas that do have conflict? Absolutely, absolutely. Don't forget, most of our societies actually grew out of conflict uh, originally, and look where we are today. Uh, the countries where Interpeace is working, you know, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Somalia, uh, countries in, uh, in Central America and Asia, these are countries that are at earlier stages of their democratic path. And so what we're trying to do is to help them along that path to find solutions to the challenges that could send them back into conflict or help them to actually emerge in the longer run uh, from these cycles of conflict. And when we're talking about conflict, it's important to remember that conflict is natural to every society. Yeah, we have it in our societies. It's just we have the institutions and the habits and the processes to deal with those conflicts in nonviolent ways. It could be the courts, could be the police, could be talk shows where different ideas and agendas are, 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 are um, confronted. But in these societies, you don't have those institutions. You don't have those habits. And so people use violence to advance their political ends. And so that's the real challenge. It's not to do away with conflict. Conflict is, can actually be an engine of growth and, and positive change. It's about transforming Co conflict into a, a positive uh, energy in society and to reduce the amount of violence that is used to advance uh, political and social ends. What are the steps that Interpeace takes to, to initiate rebuilding trust and to Im implementing peace in society where there's conflict? Well, the first thing is to help the different groups in society to actually agree what the problem was. Because very often they have very different views about why they fought in the first place. And so you have to help them to understand what went wrong. And if they can't agree on what went wrong, or what divides them, they can't then work on common solutions to solve those problems, right? So the very first step is actually to work with them, all of them in society. And it's very important to be inclusive and to bring everyone to the table to start identifying together what the issues are that divided them. And once they take ownership of that, then we help them 
along a path of solving those obstacles. Okay, and one final question for you. What has the fund achieved so far and what are you hoping to achieve from the fund in 2014? Well, the fund has already had a huge impact. Uh, already in its first year, it generated almost 400,000 Swiss francs for our work, for our peace work. And we've invested those funds to help initiate the uh, seed funding, to initiate uh, early peace building work in Mali, right after the crisis, and in Libya, right after Gaddafi fell. And in both cases, the, the Mirabeau uh, support has helped us to launch national processes of peace building in both societies. So it's already having a tremendous effect on millions of people. Um, in 2014, we anticipate the same thing. Uh, we are initiating uh, very important work in West Africa at the moment, where you're going to have uh, 19 countries in the next three years are going to go through presidential or parliamentary elections. Uh, this is going to be a highly volatile uh, period for that region of the world. We have a big process in the Great Lakes uh, of Africa as well, in Rwanda, Congo and Burundi, which is very delicate and very important. We hope that this fund will also help there and in other places like Myanmar uh, and in Central America and other countries. Okay, Scott, that was great to have you in the studio today. Thanks for having me. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back later for further updates and for further interviews from the TV team. Bye for now.